Good morning. Good morning. So last night we stayed at our guest house and this morning we decided we would stop back by the Glacier Lagoon and or the Iceberg Lagoon yes. and maybe Diamond Beach. It's very, very windy out there today. So yeah. I don't know how much we're gonna get out of the I car. I wanna say it's like 32 miles per hour, but the gusts are getting up over 40, 40 miles yeah. per hour is what they were saying. Here, I'll show you guys a little bit. I don't, there's nobody walking by, but there's we definitely no, um, yesterday we couldn't really get it on footage, but yesterday there were, there was one little seal guy um, because in the winter, I guess there's hundreds of seals that come out into this lagoon. Yesterday we came when the sun was setting and today in the morning with the sun up in the sky, the icebergs actually look a lot more crystal ice blue, but it is extremely windy. So we're just watching it from the car today. I don't know if you guys can see this guy very well. There's kind of like some water droplets on our windshield, but you can just see how- Wait till he goes to walk back the other way. Yeah. Oh, he's really not, not struggling with it at all. he has his windsuit on. <laughs> I just keep trying to show you how windy it is out there, but then people aren't really moving. There you go, there you go. So today is actually one of our big travel days. We'll be driving, heading back towards Thingvellir National Park. Just like southeast of there, but we wanted so badly to see like these glacier lagoons or yes. iceberg lagoons that it kind of involved trekking all the way up, staying for the night, and then it's gonna be like maybe a five hour drive back, but we have some stops possibly along the way. There's some um, like home caves and some lava fields that hopefully it's less windy as we get on back yeah. west. So. Maybe maybe once we get past that point of like the giant sand storm area. Right. And, and the driving, yeah, I think we'll run into a couple more sandstorms and the driving's not really that bad just because the views are great. Oh. So we're gonna hit the road. Yeah. So here's another view. We decided to come drive over towards Diamond Beach, but it is way too windy and the sand is getting kicked up. So we have decided not to walk back down. It's brought up a lot of larger pieces. Like there were maybe like one to four large pieces that were near like beach area and now they're just like covered. I wonder if they came from the lagoon, which I doubt that that much broke off from the lagoon and came around underneath the bridge and washed ashore. Oh, I'm sure. Or maybe they were like way out in the ocean floating about and got pushed with so much of the wind force up on the know. beach. Yeah. Science. doing such a good job driving us around because we're in the middle of a sandstorm. I don't know if you can really quite tell from the video, but you might be able to hear it a little bit on the windows. Oh my gosh, it's really intense right up here. Be careful. So we, a long time ago, left Diamond Beach. We've been driving for a good minute through the sandstorms, and now we are back at, we're gonna put up the, the name here. The name of it's a lava field. Lava field, yep. There are lava caves around here, and the, the lava was from the biggest eruption uh, of the area, which was like 1783. Possibly. Yeah, we think. It's um, one of the two largest, I think. Eruptions. Eruptions or lava fields? Eruptions. Eruptions. Yeah in recorded history yes and took up about half percent of iceland's of iceland. land mass yeah. so it ends up just kind of looking like all these green colored uh smooth rocks smooth rocks <laughs> and then we're gonna go down um i think there's supposed to be a cave of some sort Yes. I don't know Cross what type fingers. of cave. So yeah. we're gonna go check that out. But we're filming in the car because the wind it's is still windy here. Atrocious <laughs> yeah. today. So we'll just uh, put some of that footage up as we go in. Yes. So now we are at Rutschelier, 
I think that's how you pronounce Probably it. Probably not. We'll put it on the screen. And it's a man-made cave. There's kind of like a whole area here that has man-made caves in it in the south of Iceland, but they're virtually unknown elsewhere. This one they were saying was used to store hay or like a, like a, what do they call those? Smithy is what they said on the sign, but Black like Smith? a blacksmith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go check it out. You don't think you can go up into the cave? I mean, I can maybe climb on this and walk up. I don't know how the hell you guys are gonna do that. Oh, wow. Cool. Hey, careful, there's icicles. Hush. That's cool, huh? I tell Michael, don't look at them directly from underneath. Stand to the side and look up at them. It smells so moldy. How did they make them? How did they, like, carve them out? The cave is already here. No, it's a man-made cave. So I'm sitting in the car, we just got to another cave, and my mom and Jen decided to go on into this cave. I did not want to because Jen just read the sign and it talks about all the haunted bits and people picking the moss off of this cave and it being haunted. Really? <laughs> so I stayed in the car. We went up there. I did not step foot in it because I am very, I believe in ghosts and spirits. So I just went up and I said, I respect the spirits that reside here. I wish you only peace. And meanwhile, Michelle was in there just ripping ferns off the roof of it. Just was not. No, no, that's a joke, yeah. 